today I'm going to unbox Skyhawk Rolling Thunder 1966, a solitaire game design by Steve Dixon and Bob Best from Legion War Games, who I want to thank for uh, sending me this. I was interested in this, reached out to Randy, and guess what? Got this in the mail today with their customary thank you. Appreciate that from them. And a little bit of a ad sheet from them. Um, if you haven't checked out Legion Games, highly recommend uh, you take a look. They have a little bit of a different selection of games. It's not just your traditional, you know, Hex Encounter, Battle of the Bulge, Waterloo type games. They have kind of a little bit of a different uh, take on, on uh, conflict and war games. I have several of these, um, Splendid Little War, Toulon, um, Redbird's Reverse, The Great Game, Picket Duty, Doby Walls, and that might be it that I have for these that I see on here but a lot of great games here in fact I think Target Tonight is I think that's done by Steve Dixon as well uh, but Target uh, to, Target for Tonight and Target for Today are um, you know bombing games World War II games so really good stuff here you know B-17 uh, Super Fortress Hell of Korea you know those games are what I tend to call kind of charty war games or you know charty solo games and they owe kind of a homage to B-17, Queen of the Skies, uh, Queen of uh, Solo uh, Charty Games. And when I say Charty, they're, they're games where you're kind of going from chart to chart, rolling dice, uh, making decisions, but really kind of following the results of the dice roll on several charts and, you know, recreating somewhat of a narrative. These games tell more of a story as opposed to, you know, deep strategy. And I believe that uh, the Skyhawk owes a lot to B-17 as well, and now how it is, you know, simulating uh, the air missions in, during Vietnam in 1966, or the Rolling Thunder campaign. And I believe these are missions that are off uh, uh, aircraft carrier. I think you can both do uh, land and Navy, but I think a lot of these missions can come off uh Aircraft carriers, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Uh, I have my share of solo air games. That seems to be a, uh, outside of solo uh, sub games, solo air are, are pretty popular. Uh, and there's, you know, coming up more, more solo tank games now too. But um, in including solo games for Vietnam, Phantom Leader, uh, which is more of an operational uh, solo game uh, where you're managing several pilots over a period of time. Uh, that's Vietnam, Interceptor Ace, solo air game where you're uh, managing the uh, German uh, defense uh, during World War II, Doolittle Raid, planning the Tokyo Raid in 1942 or the Doolittle Raid, uh, more of an operational game. And from that same designer, uh, one of his latest designs, Skies Above Britain, which continues over his Skies and Storm Above the Reich series. Um, again, this is a little bit more, uh, a little bit more operational, but you know, also focusing on dogfights here. So, have quite a few air solo games. What makes this different, other than, you know, the topic, it's it's Vietnam, but as I said, I, there are some, you know, solo Vietnam air games. This one is covering Vietnam as well, uh, and it's doing it more in, again, what I would probably say a charty type fashion. There are, you know, charts that you're going to roll on and go to the next one, and there, you know, there's a campaign game in here, I believe, as well, but... Um, but this is kind of an interesting and different take on things. Um, you see an example of the mounted battle board here, where you're going to be kind of following a sequence of event uh, events on there. Show some of the game counters. Uh, let's get into the box here and see what we have. 
since I have so many of these solo games. I have a little bit of a soft spot for them. Especially since my uh, oldest is getting ready to go off to college. And I'm going to be doing mostly solo again. So there's the box. Uh, standard kind of Legion box. You know, decent thickness. Um, you know, it's fine. The art, though, is, you know, I like that art on there. You know, beauty is in the uh, eye of the beholder, so I don't know if you like it, but I kind of like that. That's kind of evocative. You've got, um, ooh, we got some stickers here. I believe there was a, uh, yeah, here it is. There's some errata. So you need to put some of these uh, stickers on some of the blank counters, I believe, and uh, deal with it there. So those are the stickers, but you also get... Uh, some baggies in there to put the counters and uh, two 10 sided dice, a green and a white. There, you have the rule book, which is a little bit glossy. There's Target for tonight and B17 or B sorry, B29. So, this is 39 pages. Of course, you got some designer notes, personal notes back there. So, really, we're looking at uh 37 pages of rules dual column looks like it's all black and white um also it's got a table of contents but i didn't see a lot of examples in there so you've got some imagery but again black and white not seeing a lot of uh not seeing a lot of examples this is more old school horror gaming in that regard. So a lot of just text, right? Done in the case system, you know, 5.4, 0.3, 5 5.5, and so on. But here are the rules. So you would think, you know, 37 pages with no images and just text that it, this might be somewhat of a complex game it's again it's it's more of a procedural like most role-playing games it's more of a procedural game following the sequence of play and following charts uh so you're starting to get into campaigns on page 26 so i guess the first 25 pages are the, the basically the core rules so there you have that so there you have it. So there's the rules. Then the lifeblood of the game are going to be the charts and tables. So you're going to have various charts, your pilot's experience level, campaign, uh, game pilot experience level, changes, maintenance personnel. So you know, chart after chart after chart, you know, to uh, that's going to be basically the, the primary procedure of the gameplay. Random events, inbound random events. I mean, you even have to check to see if you, you know, if you get the hook, you know, at the end that, that grabs the, uh, the the cable, so that uh, stops your plane on the carrier. It gets down to that level of chartiness. Here's some of the hits and everything here. So as you can see, quite a bit of of charts. Then you got it based on the ordinance, it looks like. Bombs and weapons. Some charts based on that. Here's the aircraft carrier. That's from the USS Enterprise there. So a lot of charts and tables inside the charts and tables book. Imagine that. Who would have thought? This is the target listing gazetter. So this is where you're going to determine your missions. And uh, like this is the U.S. Navy target list. And you'll roll uh, with the two with the two dice, you'll roll a percentage on there. So you have anywhere from 0, uh, 1 to 100. And let's say, let's say if you roll like a 77, it'll be the location is VIN. It'll tell you the target. This one you have to roll a separate 10-sided dice to figure out whether it's military barracks or headquarters, military region 4. Type is buildings, and then route package is three, and that route package is going to determine, you know, 
how far away it is or what zone it is. And you might need to take some like extra uh, fuel tanks to get there and stuff like that. So it affects your outfitting of the uh, of the uh, planes. So you got the Navy target list and then you have the Air Force target list. So you're going to have both uh, land and naval based missions. So here's a military SIS command target list. So there you have it. That's your target. And here's the region. So like if um, region four, region three. So the further you go out, you might need to uh, carry more fuel. or and So it might affect your load or your, your build out, load out limits on your planes. We get to the counter sheets here. Looks like we've got two. These are standard... Uh, you know, Legion counter sheets there. They're not super thick, but they're not, you know, they're not paper thin. They usually pop out pretty good. I'm probably going to be using some of these blanks here for those stickers probably. But it looks like you've got some of your pilots here. Again, this is going to be mostly, uh, these counters are going to be mostly administrative. You know, keeping track of your battle board or keeping track of your plane and combat and the like. Looks like they're one-sided. You've got various of your planes, and I think I read somewhere that there might be some errata on the plane notations, just some of them. And then you've got your planes themselves here, which are a little bit thicker or, or bigger counters. Then you've got some metals and uh, stuff that you're going to be putting on your... Uh, rewarding your pilot uh, so you can kind of do a little bit of a rpg aspect here a lot of these games these uh solo charty games tend to have a little bit of that rpg where you can keep a pilot and advance them or promote them or get awards and have them go over various missions you got looks like you got some of your ordinance here and again that's uh one-sided then we've got the Dump this out here. Ooh. We've got the board itself, which is mounted. Nicely done here. Good mount there. Kind of wraps over the edge like that. So you got your map, and this is basically going to be the, the, the battle board. This is where you're going to be doing most of your... Uh, keeping track of most of your action. Like here's the trap where you're going to catch that as you land. Then you have recovery. Then you're going to be launching. So you're going to be starting the missions here. You have inbound random events, which usually is probably a bad thing. You've got aerial refuel. You've got support units. Then you're going to get to support attacks, where you might be assigning some of your support units to this area, where you can get you have SAMs and MIGs and anti-air uh, 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 artillery. You know, SAM radar. So you know this is. Uh, you know, kind of your the first line of their defense that you have to go through. You get the target approach, target attack, and then you could either you know come back inbound or you know re you know try another pass at the target and kind of so you can do a loop here, or you go back back to the hitting back to the uh, to the aircraft carrier. And then if you lose a pilot, you know something gets shot down or something happens. There's a search and rescue, rescue bailout. And the like over here. They're searching and rescue over land and over water and then a ditch. So, you know, really getting into the, uh, you know, tactical aspects of the, uh, of the mission. You get your uh, Skyhawk mission record card. And you might want to make a copy of this to, to write on this. This is a little glossy. I mean, you might be able to write on this and wipe it off maybe, or maybe laminate this, but um, I'll probably make a copy of it. This is where you're going to keep track of stuff, you know, like your the pilot, pilot rating, uh, altitude, wounds, ammo, if there's damage to any of the systems, you know, like avionics, uh, common nav, fuel, ordnance, hydraulics, oxygen, electrical, landing gear, so there could be damages to those things, and... Um, you know, that, that could be a bad thing, right? You got your external tanks, left, right, center. And then you got all these other notations here as well on the uh, actual plane itself. And that's one side because you probably keep that off to the side as you're playing it on the board. 
are playing the game. Then you've got your uh, ordnance card, and this is how you're going to outfit your uh, arm, your, your plane, depending on what the mission is. You've got left, uh, outboard, inboard, right, inboard, outboard, and then your center line. And this tells you what you can put there. So your left outboard, these are the different type of armaments you can put there. What the load limit is for that left outboard there, station one. And then that's for each one of these areas. And then like it's a center line station. This is my, probably where you put, might put a lot of your tanks there. You can have up to, uh, you know, 1, 150 or 1, 300 or 1, 400. And the, but the total load limit is 3,600 pounds. So there's a lot more load you can put on the middle. So you can like stack counters up here between tanks and, and armaments that you put on there. But each one of these areas has kind of the load limit um, and how you would kind of uh, arm your, your plane. Okay, and that'll probably be off the side too because you want to keep track of what your armaments are. This right here is, uh, I think this is deal with the optional rules. There's some optional rules if you want to do like, I don't know if you're doing like wings or something, like divisions one, two, three, and four, keeping track of multiple planes because you got division leaders and then like sectional or wingmen. These are a little bit thicker stock there. Then this is where you, you know, put your medals and keep track of your pilot's uh, experience, so to speak, over time. It's kind of cool. A little bit, little bit thicker cardstock there. This right here is probably going to be the, the lifesaver for you playing the game over time. It's got the base. It's your turn sequence and got your basic rules. So, you know, you'll read that. 30, 25 to 37 pages rules, whatever, if you're using optional or not. But then once you get that down a little bit, then you'll probably just refer to this and you know, what your basic rules are, sequence of play, and what you need to follow. It even has some references to the optional rules that you might want to use here as well. A little bit thicker stock, you can put that off to the side and kind of refer to the sequence of play. You have these division record sheets, which uh, looks like there's just one there. Something you might want to copy. This is to keep track of stuff. Name, rating, rank, hits, wounds, load. That's if you're, I think that's if you're uh, handling multiple aircraft. Pilot roster sheet. And again, I think these are all, they're all thicker stock, but all something you might want to make a copy of at some point to, to fill out and keep track of stuff. Name, rank, rating, and awards and notes there. You might want to note if they had to ditch and rescued or something like that. Again, you can really, you know, what you, um, how much extra narrative you want to put into this is you know, kind of up to you in some of these games. I mean, there's procedural and you're rolling on charts and you're tracking to see what's going on, but you, you can add kind of the color to it based on what happened and the stories that kind of emanate out of going through the procedure and the chart. So that's why these, these are kind of generally considered like narrative-driven uh, games. Here's your campaign record sheet. Keep track of pilots, targets, types, and all that other stuff there. And again, that's a little bit thicker stock. You got the campaign calendar. So I imagine this is for the campaign game. So you're going from August of 66 to November of 66. I think that's the historical... Rolling Thunder campaign, and um, before I was born. Um, and then you, get, you have campaigns one, two, three, and some notes on here. And again, you can make a copy of this and keep notes on this as well. And then you got a little nice little pink sheet to protect the stuff, right? So there you have it. This is what you get in a box of Skyhawk. Um, Rolling Thunder 1966. So this is a a charty air game in the, in somewhat in the the line of the you know B17 Queen of the Sky type uh, game, uh, but dealing with Vietnam. As I said, you know, uh, Phantom Leader deals with Vietnam, but that's a different game. That's a DVG Leader series that really goes into. Uh, it's a little bit more operational and management of the stress of the pilots, and, and it has more of an operational campaign feel to 
it, although you're doing some tactical missions as well. This feels, you know, again, kind of the charty. Uh, um, you're dealing with, I think, just one plane in this. I, again, I think there's option rules to deal with more. But um, it's taking a different approach. This is more chart heavy, where the leader series is more, you know, dice heavy or just rolling dice on uh, on the cards for hits and stuff like that and, and using different armament. You know, this has armament or build outs as well. But again, you're kind of following uh, following a procedure in the chart a little bit more closely. Uh, I would imagine this probably plays quicker, but I don't know that for a fact. Um, so that's one reason I was kind of interested in this and seeing what this uh, what this has to offer. Um, I'm not afraid of doing a game that's based on a lot of charts and tables. Again, for for a solo player, this is a an interesting and, and efficient way of you know kind of handling the AI because it's it's random but yet the uh, AI is built into the charts and tables. You got the rule book, nice thick rule book. Um, you know again, just black and white, but uh, you're getting your money's worth of text in there. Some baggies, dice, and uh, then the stickers, and of course there's the errata in there, and there you have it. Skyhawk Rolling Thunder 1966 from Steve Dixon, Bob Best, and many, many thanks to Legion War Games. I really am interested in getting into this. And, you know, if I can find the time, I might actually do like an after action report or maybe even do some playthrough. I don't, I haven't really done a live playthrough, but I've done some, you know, taped playthrough and. I don't know if I can if I can organize myself enough. Uh, I have a tendency to refer to the rules a little bit too much, maybe for viewing viewers liking. So, or at least messing up the rules to viewers liking. So, um, but I might try to get some gameplay on this and somehow because this looks interesting enough to get out there. And uh, I don't know, it just it just you know spoke to me when I when I saw something out there on that. That's why I wanted to reach out to Legion on this. So. What do you all think about this? As I said, there's there's a lot of, as I showed earlier, there's a lot of solo air games covering different uh, periods. In fact, I think you know Compass is coming out with a World War I uh, solo air game. So um, <laughs> there's, you know, there, there, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not lacking in that area. Uh, again, this one kind of feels more like the B-17 or the other Legion game B-29. Uh, in kind of the charty war game aspect, but uh, there's there's also kind of a comfort and familiarity with those as well, at least for some people. Uh, well, for me, I'll speak for myself. Anyway, love to know your thoughts on this. Um, uh, most importantly, thanks for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Always appreciate any time you stop by. Best way I know you stop by is drop me a comment down there and tell me what you think about this or any of the other solo offerings, solo air offerings that are out there. Uh, or the pros and cons of Charty War Games. Yeah, it's all good. I'll listen to it all. What am I else am I going to do? Anyway, uh, again, thanks for stopping by. Uh, hope you're having a good one. And all the best on gaming and into this new year. Take care. <laughs>